Still in the room for today's video because it is still super smoky outside. Don't know how accurate this is, but yeah, the sun shouldn't be bleeding red. Anyway, today we check out the Mistal Barocco MD770 and I have the RGB version. And apparently there's a Bluetooth version which may or may not be out yet. Opening it up, we have a user manual which you will actually need for this board. We have a wire keycap puller which is rubberized, really nice. A whole bunch of keycaps that we'll check out later. We have our USB-A to USB-C cable and USB-C to USB-C cable to connect the two halves together. There's some tall rubber feet and finally the keyboard itself. So this is how it comes out of the box. We have our two halves because it is of course a split mechanical keyboard. It has a plastic enclosure and is also available in white. The plastic feels good with a satin finish that doesn't show fingerprints and the bezels are sizable but look a bit thinner with the pretty flat chamfer that goes all the way around with the top being a bit thicker to accommodate the LED lock indicators as well as the tasteful Mistel branding. The keyboard does have a slight natural inclination but if we turn it over we have our typical rubber feet to keep it from sliding but we also have these other spots and that's where our tall feet come in. So the whole split thing is for ergonomic benefits which we'll go deeper into and basically these feet enhance that. We only get 4 feet so you can increase the angle by putting them in these two spots but that will only increase your wrist angle which is not good so I recommend putting them in the inside spots. This is much better than their 60% version, the MD600, as those just used flip up feet that didn't have this flexibility. On the rear we have four USB-C ports. The two middle ones are for connecting the two halves with the cord cable. And then this actually confused me at first, you have to use the right hand port to be able to use both sides. And now we can talk ergonomics, so split keyboards. Looking at a traditional computer keyboard, our hands have to go towards the middle which angles our arms inwards and then we have to straighten our wrists. If we take our halves apart, we can spread out our arms to a more natural position which slightly improves our wrist positioning. But then if we angle the pieces inwards, we fix that even more. In addition to the split, having the feet on the inside edges gives the tenting effect where we peek towards the center. And this is also just how our hands rest naturally. This can be kind of difficult to adapt to, just having the pieces split apart can be disorientating, but for me, as with every split in existence, it's just individual typing habits. So I type with like three fingers on my left, four if you count the thumb for spacebar, and then two on my right, and I'll often press B with my right and Y with my left sometimes. And it's just something that you have to get used to to fully benefit. And it probably will be beneficial for your typing form in the long run. And funnily enough, this caused me to use the keyboard in its joint form quite a lot, especially when I wanted to get serious work done but in tented mode still. And I actually found this pretty comfortable to use, although the front is a bit high. Other benefits of the split nature? It's just all about flexibility. So we move each piece wherever, so you can have food in the middle if you want to, whatever you want. You can move a piece out of the way, which some might like for gaming or something, and you can even just plug in the left hand side for even more space. The actual layout though is a classic 75% but with a split spacebar, therefore it has 85 keys I hope. We have our dedicated arrow keys, a couple of nav keys on the right hand side, and the function row on top. So essentially a 10 keyless keyboard in regards to primary functionality but in a more space efficient form factor. Replacing the keycap should be fine, except for the space bars which may be tough, with a 3U on the left and 3.25U on the right. However, these keycaps are really nice. They're a real solid 1.5mm thick PBT and are double shot, so the Legend is another piece of plastic and won't fade away. Really nice quality, the Legends look clean and crisp and the alignment looks pretty flawless. Just the E on the backspace is a bit thin. Would have been really cool if they were in cherry profile, which are a bit shorter, but that might be asking a bit too much. The black matches the case nicely and they've gone with orange for the legends which is the mistal colour. And those extra keycaps we got in the box, these actually complete the set for a full size keyboard which is amazing and there's an M on the inside of each cap from mistal. Anyway, back to the layout, this keyboard is programmable, 
Mistle are part of the Vortex group, so this has exactly the same onboard programming methods as the Poké keyboards, which I've gone through in the past, and I really can't be stuffed to do that again because it's so tedious to go through. But yep, we can customize each key with macros and such, except for these keys, but yeah, I'll link that in the description. And on the bottom we also have some dip switches that can change some key positions, but the one of note is dip1 which can change it to Mac mode, and that enables a bunch of Mac OS functions. It comes in a range of Cherry MX key switches, and with so much development in the key switch world I honestly find it somewhat limiting, especially when you go towards the higher end of retail Macs. Anyway, I have Cherry MX Browns in mind, which are a light tactile switch and has a bump in the middle. Types exactly how you would expect a Cherry MX Brown to type like. We get that faint tactile bump and the bottom mount and top out sounds are pretty loud. The keyboard does sound somewhat thin so it doesn't have the most pleasant acoustics being a tad high pitched. There is a bit of metallic ping but it's not very noticeable in actual use but you can hear it with singular presses. The stabilizers however are solid, there's minimal rattle which is great to hear and makes the typing experience better. To take the keyboard apart, there's a bunch of Phillips head screws on the bottom which releases the top frame and then a bunch under some keycaps. Here are the bottom pieces which are very basic with minimal ribbing on the bottom surface, pretty empty and is maybe why it didn't sound the best, so maybe you can chuck some foam in there to get a denser feel and sound. The top plastic pieces are of course flimsy on their own but they feel good and are actually quite thick which I like. Here's the PCB, again I don't know much to be honest but the solder joints look nice and clean and we have the SMD RGB LEDs for each switch so the switches won't be tough to desolder. On top we have our USB-C ports and finally the plate is made from 1.5mm steel and gives the keyboard most of its weight and rigidity. Alrighty, so it's another cool keyboard from Mistel. Back when the 60% version came out it was quite popular as it was basically a split poker which was hugely popular back then. Now they have their 75% version which I think is a great form factor which is super accessible to use in comparison to the 60% because of the dedicated arrow keys and even the function row on top. They improved the feet situation so we can actually tent it now, although it is a pretty mild angle. 
The keycaps are awesome, and it's just cool having another split option on the market. Split isn't for everyone, and it will take time to adapt to, but you can't deny the ergonomic fundamentals behind it. It's just how our bodies are, and some people will benefit more than others. You still will need to address the wrist angle if you're resting them on the desk, like the tenting is fine, but we still have that front angle. It comes in at about 160 USD, so it's not cheap, but it is unique. And, well, it's fair in the retail market. And unique is the main word. You won't find many other split 75% keyboards, even in the custom game, which would be several hundred dollars more anyway. So if you're keen on a split and 60% isn't your thing, then this may be the one for you.